So welcome in this q and I'm going to answer the question of this user that states the following. Does Gazebo simulate air resistance? So the quick answer is yes and no. So we don't have anything by default that simulates it, but we can do plugins for Gazebo that can do that and much more. So many people have done similar things and depending on what you want, you will use one or the other. But uh, I started from this Hector Quadrotor um, Gazebo plugins. And from there, I generated my own plugin just because this is more suited for Quadrotor uh, simulation. And I wanted to have total control on what, what I was doing. But basically, I just um, copy pasted some of the parts of the code and adapted it to my own uh, needs. So let's have a look how this is done. So all the code that I've done, I've posted it through Git in this buoyancy test package that I leave in the video description. But also I leave in the video description the Rosject that you have uh, available for free that you have everything plug and play so you the first thing is you just have to open it once we have loaded the project you have a very useful notebook that has all the explanations of what I'm going to um, do right now uh, so if you want to have a look and then you have more details and also some indications of what to do next. Okay, so the first thing is how do we do this plugin and uh, how it works. So let me open the IDE. Let me close the things that we don't need now. Okay, so I've created this uh, this buoyancy test package that I used in previous Q and A's. What I've done is I've created this C++ files that simulate the fluid uh, resistance. So, and the question was air resistance, but um, air is a fluid, so this is applicable to any fluid whatsoever. How do we use this C++, this plugin? Well, I've created this URDF that uses this plugin here, air resistance. Yeah, that only has the topic that you want, the name of the topic that you want, you, want, you can change it. The link that you will apply this air resistance Normally, in this case, because this uh, object only has two links and basically there's only one useful link, I apply it to this link. And then the update rate is the rate at which we uh, apply this force continuously, okay? And at the rate at which we update this, the, the speeds of, of the object. So let's have a look. The first thing is you can copy paste this code. I mean, I've copied it from other previous plugins that I did. In this case, the model mass controller that I did, this one. And what you have to do is uh, you have to create a gazebo plugin, more precisely a model plugin, you see? Yeah, in this case with the name fluid resistance, which is this class that we are generating here that inherits from uh, from model plugin parameters that we're loading here in this case uh, resistance topic name and so on and here we do anything related to ROS and gazebo I won't go into details but essentially what we're doing is a topic subscriber that listens to floats and through these floats we will give the fluid resistance, yeah? So in the on update, what it does is it updates and applies the, uh, the resistance, yeah? So when we call the topic, this message, this method is called, 
and we set the resistance, but we don't apply it. Yeah, the one that applies it is here in the simulation loop. Yeah, the update loop. So if we go to here, apply resistance, the first thing we do is we update the linear velocity, which what it does is it gets the linear velocity of the model and then we store it. Once we have that, then we calculate the force that will be applied. In this plugin, because it's very, very simple, the torque, it's zero. So we're not applying any torque, any resistance when turning. We could do it, but for now, this is more than enough, okay? I've stated this here, but it's zero, and here it will be basically, it won't be applied, okay? So, force. The force, it's calculated based on the fluid resistance that we publish in through the topic, then with the linear velocity, and then we change it of direction. That way, if we move forward, then it will be applied in the opposite direction. And that's quite it. So there's not much to it. Then another thing that I've generated is a propulsion plugin that you can have a look here also. It's based, it works exactly the same, just that it doesn't use an update. So in the update, you see that there's nothing published there. And what it does is each time that it gets a message, what we do is apply a force in that direction that we are giving through the topic with a twist. Yeah. So let's have a look at how this works. So first thing, we're going to launch the simulation, which is here. While it launches, we start the web shell. And we can go to the notebook and have a look. Now, as I told you, all the instructions are here. So there we go. I created a, a script that publishes there in, uh, in the twist. Yeah. So in the propulsion topic, we'll see in a minute. Okay. Uh, I think we got it. There we go. So we have our buoyancy bot here. We hit play. Nothing happens. Why? Because the buoyancy it's neutral and we're not applying any force. So it does move. Okay. So what we're going to do is launch this script. This script, what it does is if we open a shell and we do ROS topic list, we can see that we have some topics here and one of them is propulsion. Propulsion is a topic that listens to any publications and then applies a force based on the twist given, okay? What we're doing with this script, what we're doing with this script is publishing in that topic, yeah? Okay, let's close this for the moment and let's apply a certain amount of force. You can see here in the logs what is being applied right now to the robot through the plugins. So in this case, we're seeing that the linear speed is zero and the fluid resistance therefore is zero more or less. Yeah, okay. Once we get this, let me just put it like that so we can see that it moves. There we go. So I'm applying right now a force, but it's really small. So I'm going to push it up a bit, like 10. And there you go. So you have to keep pressing to apply more and more force. I think that's it. So you see that the linear speed in X is a certain amount and we are applying certain amount of fluid resistance in that axis. But because it's the fluid resistance by default is one, it's really small. 
So let's say we are in, a, in the air, for example. So at this speed, the fluid resistance is negligible, really. And it will take a long, long time to stop. So what can we do? Well, we can change the fluid. So ROS topic list, ROS topic publish, and we have, uh, where is it? Fluid resistance. There we go, tab, and let's put, oh, sorry. Uh, last topic, fluid resistance. Let's put, for example, 1000. Yeah, 1000 is really high for fluid resistance. So let's put robot here that there we go and we apply it as you can see it now stops very very fast and that's it now because this fluid is applied uh, this fluid resistance over thousands is applied now, if I try to move it, it will be really, really difficult to move because now the air resistance will be very, very high. So let's have a look here. So if, for example, now I try to um, to move it through the keyboard system using the same force more or less that I used, like 10 and I try to apply it. Now it breaks really, really fast because the numbers applied are very high. So no matter what I do, if I apply very high, I'm pressing all the time. But when I release, it stops immediately or practically immediately, yeah. And yeah, that's quite it. So I hope I more or less answered the question. And if you have any doubts, I'll post here the solution and also the project and so on. So any questions, don't doubt, don't hesitate to, to post them there or in the description below in the video. And that's it. Thank you and hope to see you soon.